all the time, I'm getting questions about what color brand I'm using for my own work. But first of all, let me tell you a little secret. Color mixing is not about brands. Mm -mm, it isn't. What really matters is what do you know about color. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my color mixing secrets. So let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I don't want to talk about color theory. There are plenty of videos on this topic in YouTube. Today, I want to talk about what color brands I'm using for my own work. I prefer Rembrandt. I like their consistency. They are easily available, not very pricey, and they are professional quality. So that's my choice. This is not a commercial. Nowadays, you can choose from many other quality oil paint manufacturers such as Rublev, Michael Harding, whatever, Windsor & Newton. You have to find what works best for you. For me, Rembrandt. The choice of colors I'm using is based on the lightning I use for my subject for my paintings. As I said before, because I use almost always a natural light source, I have a predominance of warm colors on my palette. Okay, let's see what I got almost always on my palette. This is my basic color setup. I almost always use these colors for my painting as a starting point. Here I got whites. This one is titanium white. This color is uh, Flemish white. It, it's color from Rublev. It's called the Flemish white. It is a lead white color. I got yellow ochre. I got cadmium yellow deep, cadmium orange, cadmium red deep, metal lake deep, burnt amber, light blue mixture, which is basically a mixture of ultramarine blue with white and small addition of metal lake deep. And finally, I got ivory black. Of course, I have a lot of other colors and hues that I add or remove as needed, you know, different shades of uh, yellows and greens and so on. From time to time, I use colors from different manufacturers such as Rublev, for example, Old Holland, Michael Harding. But most of the time I stick to a Rembrandt brand. It does not matter. Each of the colors has a certain feel and you have to find what works best for you. Let's take a closer look at the individual colors I have. I start with white. I got titanium white. I use titanium white mainly for direct painting methods. This white is slower dry. <coughs> excuse me. This white is slow drying color compared to a flake white. It is a pretty common color I think used by every artist. This color, lead white, I got Flemish white from Rublev, or this color is from a local supplier. Flake white is great color for underpaintings. Lead white is great for building a texture or thick deposits of paint. This color is resistant to humidity. Its layers remain elastic for a long time. Therefore, you will not get a better color for underpainting than the lead white. Basically, any pure white color is classified as a cool color. Adding white reduces the chroma of the default color and moves it to the cooler part of the color spectrum. It is okay when you need it that way, but if the local color of your subject is warm white, for example, white flowers illuminated by the sun, Pure white does not to solve the problem at best. To save this step, I use other colors, which I call warm white. Here I got warm light yellow from Michael Harding. This, one, uh, this color is uh, yellow, Naples yellow deep, which is more yellowish than 
light yellow. This color is Naples yellow red, which has a reddish hue. Then uh, other two colors. These colors are perfect to, to the, for mixing uh, local colors for white flowers. They have a warm hue, which is exactly what do you need when do you have to paint perfect illusion of white color under the natural warm light source. Although I said before that these colors are perfect for white flowers, it is still necessary to mix other shades from them during the painting. For example, if I'm looking for half tone, the half tone is always cooler than the local color, so I can add the light blue mixture to a local color. And as you can see, the resulting mixture, mixture is much cooler, suitable for half tone area. If I need a color suitable for shade, uh, for area in the shadow, I can add a burnt umber, which causes lowering a bit the chroma and the value and so on. These colors are my favorites and for me, the whole process of mixing warm white is a lot easier with them. These are my yellow colors. Here I got yellow ochre, which is basically low chroma middle value yellow. Most often I'm using yellow ochre for warming up my grays for grisiles. It has a nice warm touch and earthy hue. Here I got cadmium yellow deep, which is warm yellow. I like this color. I'm using this yellow a lot. And I also, also I have a cadmium yellow medium. This color is a very nice high chroma yellow and it has a cooler hue than cadmium yellow deep. Here I got a few samples from my beautiful garden. Uh, this is a lemon, of course it's not from my garden, it's from a local store. Uh, choosing the right yellow depends again on the local color of your subject. As you can see, this yellow is a bit, a bit warmer than this yellow. So the better choice for this color is cadmium yellow deep because it has a warmer hue. If I would paint these flowers, I would choose a bit cooler yellow. This cooler yellow, uh, this cooler yellow would be also suitable for uh, painting the lemon. Just a touch of white and it has almost the same color as my lemon. Anyways, during the painting and mixing, you still need to adjust the chroma and the value, no matter what color, what yellow color are using. If I would need half tone color, I will add a small amount of blue, which causes cooling down yellow. For the shadow area, I can add a burnt umber, for example, or here I got transparent oxide red, and so on. So these are my yellow colors. Next colors on my palette are reds. Most of the time I'm using just two reds. Here I got uh, Meadow Lake Deep and Cadmium Red Deep. Cadmium Red Deep is a warm red compared to Meadow Lake Deep, which is a much cooler color with a lot of blue in it. Generally, those reds are too chromatic for my work. So I need to, I need to lower the chroma somehow. The best way to do so is of course use complementary colors such as green, I have a veridian here, 
as you can see green color reduce the chroma of red very significantly if I need to go cooler I'm using for example ultramarine blue which cool it down the red but also lower the chroma uh, sorry lo lower the value sometimes for my half tones I'm using my light blue mixture which is pretty convenient because with this mixture I can lower the chroma without uh, lowering the value that's why I'm using this this light blue okay these are my reds now to my greens I got on my palette a few of green hues of course from Rembrandt I got Viridian green earth sap green but generally i like to mix my own green from ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow deep the reason why i like to mix my own greens is uh, i don't like any of those colors too much because some of them especially sap green is very transparent and uh, when I mix my green from those two colors I can easily you know s uh, balance the temperature and hue if I add a more blue the green is much more bluish if I will add a yellow the green is with significant yellow hue from time to time of course I need to lower chroma again the best way to do so is you use some complementary for example cadmium red which shift the green toward the warmer hue or alizarin crimson When I need to lower the chroma and value, I sometimes am using sometimes a burnt umber, which is basically low chroma and low value red color. When I need to go down with the value even more, the touch of black color works very well for this purpose. But be careful with the black because basically the black is uh, low, low chroma blue color so if you add black to any other color it causes to lowering the chroma so use black color only when you need significantly lose the saturation of your mixture so last colors on my palettes are blues here I got black uh, even though it is a black color uh, with the small addition of white it can be seen the ivory black I'm sorry I, for I forgot to tell you this ivory black the ivory black has a bluish thin you know so the black color can be sometimes considered as a low chroma blue color another blue I'm using is ultramarine which is great color for painting the sky and my favorite color light blue mixture which I'm using very often for my half tones I like to use for my half tone uh, this color because uh, when you are adding uh, this ultramarine blue it is a pretty dark blue so when you add a blue ultra when you add ultramarine blue to your mixture it causes 
lowering the value also with the chroma. It's much easier to use a lighter blue for this purpose. So these are my blues. Anyways, this is my basic setup of, of colors I'm currently using, but from time to time I like to change my palette according to what I'm painting. You know, I like to experiment and uh, I like to try new colors and hues. Sometimes I'm adding new colors to my palette. If I need to, sometimes I'm removing few colors according to my needs and so on. So this is my basic color setup. Thank you so much guys for stopping by. If you like this video and you want to support my work, please don't forget to check the links below the video and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you next time, bye!